All right, so let's see, what's going on with you? Is there anything anyone's talking about, about fights you might have coming up? I can't think, oh, right. <laughs> Errol Spence, do you have any news as to how close that fight is? Not really. Nothing's really, you know what I mean, set in stone or, you know, any dates or anything thus far. Uh, but we're definitely working on that fight to happen. And w what would that mean for you? Is that, do you feel like this is the perfect time for that fight, that it really should happen now. Yes, uh, I do. I do believe this is the perfect time, being that it's for all the marbles, it's for undisputed. You know, so uh, this is a big moment for not only myself but for Errol Spence Jr. as well to make, you know, history in his own right. We unpack. We unpack. Unpack, coming to your live box and ego unpack, yeah. Uh, we unpack. We unpack. We unpack. So you heard for yourself, Terrence Crawford says now is the perfect time to fight Errol Spence Jr. And I couldn't agree more. And the interview came from Showtime. Hmm. Let's talk about this right now. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. SLC, subscribe, like, and comment in that order. You shouldn't even leave a comment if you haven't already subscribed and liked. So, Terrence Crawford, Showtime posted that video. A lot of people sent it to me. Appreciate you guys for always helping the channel and helping myself stay in touch and in tune with every little thing that's going on again slc hit the subscribe button hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything terrence crawford said there's no official date and you know there's no like big update but he said they're trying to get the fight cracking which is is good and at the end of the day it's preferred because they're not going to give you everything like I tell you guys all the time on the channel, one of the quickest ways to ensure that a fight has delays or doesn't get made is trying to negotiate the fight in public. And I think one of the people that are most notorious in the world of boxing for doing this is Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn will talk about his chickens and count his eggs before they hatch. He'll talk about Dillian White and Deontay Wilder. He wants to see Derek Chisora and Deontay Wilder. He wants to see Dillian White and Luis King Kong Ortiz. He wants to see Dillian White, make sure you guys subscribe, versus Andy Ruiz Jr. But guess what? Premier Boxing Champs, PBC, they got today, actually, Andy Ruiz and Luis Ortiz press conference, and they're actually fighting each other. But let Eddie Hearn tell it, he's listed all these fights charlo and andrade or Derek chisora we want we want him to fight against adam kaunecki and none of these fights are happening so when fans are getting frustrated i'm not with this terrence crawford and errol spence yeah the impatient boxing fan and all of us we want to see it we want confirmation but like for real some of y'all got to get on your alpha and start working on your purpose because when you're when you're really and truly working on your purpose then you really don't have time to worry about things to a next level like if you have a life of your own you're taking care of your family taking care of your kids taking care of yourself building a brand building an empire you really don't have as much time so i haven't really truly been bothered by the lack thereof of news for Crawford and Errol Spence because I feel like that's usually a good sign as I mentioned earlier the less they say and less that is revealed because the thing is when they start putting in dates when, when you tell people too much it only can lead to possible letdown or disappointment for example if you say oh um Crawford and Errol Spence are gonna fight on Halloween October 31st or the day close like let's say October 30th right let's say that's the Saturday and you put that out there in the public and people start reporting it then you got someone out there who's like oh man I live in Las Vegas October 30th is my birthday and then they get hyped and then what if the negotiations string out too long and then now they're talking about the fight being in November 
So that's one of the major keys, DJ Khaled voice. Why you don't blabber mouth and start talking about the fight overly before you get the business sign. There's no signatures and you're just telling everything to the media. So I like the fact that Crawford and Errol Spence, they're not giving you a date. Steven Espinosa, he's not giving you a date. He's just saying, oh, we're making progress. Crawford saying he wants it. Errol Spence says, I think it'll happen. I want it to happen. It should happen. Things like that. So it's, it's a bit of a cliffhanger, but I wouldn't prefer it any other way. Now, I would be remiss in this very video to not talk about this. You heard the clip at the beginning and Terrence Crawford, he's saying the question was now, do you think now is the best time to make this fight happen? And he reveals, yes, I do think it's the best time to make this fight happen because right now is for all the marbles. Ironically enough, the Bud Buddies, when I said that previously, they said I was hating because you're not going to like this, but I don't say and, and report and give commentary based on what's popular. I don't really care about popularity and what you like and what you don't like, all that type of stuff. I tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. And people tried so hard to bend the truth and make it look like Errol Spence was petrified and afraid and ducking Terrence Crawford. And they were going, I've seen it on boxing Twitter. I've seen it on YouTube. I've seen it in boxing forums. I've seen it on Instagram, everywhere, right? And you really painted this, this masterpiece, which was really a disaster piece because it's not true. And you, you try to make it look like Errol Spence was this yellow belly coward, didn't want to fight Crawford and, and things like that. I never used my channel, my voice, my influence in the game to suggest no cockamamie stuff like that. In fact, I said the opposite. I said, I don't think Crawford's afraid of Errol Spence. I don't think Errol Spence is afraid of Crawford. It's just Crawford, you know, he's made the business decisions that he made and he's where he is. And these created complexities in making the fight. Now he's a free agent. Now it looks like we could get the fight. So it just looks like everything that I've said from the get go, from the jump, holds true so ego stradama strikes again and then now crawford is admitting that now is the best time for the fight which is exactly what i said while other people other channels other instagrammers or whoever as i mentioned earlier were using this moment because they weren't get like some boxing fans act like spoiled brats little babies little kids that can't get their way and have temper tantrums so because boxing fans or boxing hosts or whoever couldn't get their way they made it look like errol spence they try to paint this narrative that he was ducking and he didn't want no smoke with crawford and i told you i said it from the beginning like it doesn't it really didn't make sense for a lot of reasons for them to have fought years ago like yeah okay they could have fought let's say in 2018 2019 but then guess what errol spence got in a car accident in the back half of 2019 and earlier in the in the year like august or september he fought sean porter in the unification so if they would have fought in february 2019 then errol spence would only have one belt which is the ibf belt because he hadn't unified with anybody until he fought sean porter in the fall of 2019 so that doesn't really make sense and then more recently, Errol Spence just fought your Dennis Ugas and mashed his eye up and turned him into a Cyclops. That was in like April or May of this year, 2022. And then we had the whole pandemic year. So that probably wouldn't have been a good year the whole year of 2020 because in March, my birthday month, March 2020 is when the world, or at least in America, we really started going on global pandemic lockdowns and shutdowns and the NBA shut down. So, 2020 would have been a horrific year for this fight because there wasn't a vac there wasn't a vaccine and vaccinations were widely um available and or people didn't have them and they were heavily doing the social distancing so you look at a fight like Crawford Spence the amount of money that this fight can garner and, and generate and and earn for the sport of boxing and the people throwing it 
it just doesn't make sense to have done it when there was so much that was unknown when the pandemic first started. So 2020 wouldn't have been a bad year or a good year to do it because of obvious reasons I just mentioned, social distancing and whatnot. And this is just too big of a fight. The year before that, that's when he got in a car accident. And then if you talk about earlier in the year, as I mentioned, that was before he fought Sean Porter. And it would have been before he fought Ugas and before Ugas beat Pacquiao. So I agree with Crawford. But of course I agree because this is what I've been telling you from the beginning. No matter how hard the Bud Buddies and radical Crawford fans try to make Errol Spence look like he was doing bad business, he clearly wasn't doing bad business because guess what? The business he did made sense. He built his profile. He did big fights, 40, 50,000 with Mikey Garcia and got names like Lamont Peterson, handle mandatories. And then most importantly, he unified with other champions and took belts off of them. So I agree, this is the best time for the fight because now instead of it being two belts on the line, it's for all four belts to sew up the division and truly prove who is the the winner, you know what I'm saying? Who is the welterweight supreme? Like who holds all the cars? Who's the Thanos of the welterweight division? And it's just so funny to see all these narratives now have to be regulated and these narratives now have to be considered jokes because you told me a lot of old media they told me that errol spence was the holdup and he was the problem but truth be told it really didn't make any sense for the fight to have happened and now it could happen on one network they don't have to worry about joint and splits and things like that so the holdup was always terence crawford and who he was aligned to no more no less but Errol Spence, he did things, in my opinion, that made this fight all, all better because Crawford, he was a champion his first fight at welterweight. So that's nothing new. And then beyond that, a lot of the names he fought weren't the in prime names that people probably would have liked to see him fight. The Danny Garcias, Mikey Garcia, Keith Thurman, you know, or whoever, Ugas, things like that. So he, he had fights that top rank could get him but these weren't the fights that really hyped his profile that's henceforth why bob Arum probably said with crawford i lost a lot of money with him you know what i mean and this is all on crawford's shoulders this is your team and the situation you were in who you aligned yourself with and that's just what it is and now crawford is admitting that by saying now is the best time for the fight as i've said so again checkmate I continue to put out and produce the illest and realest conversations in boxing. And over time, these things are shown to be true. This is now the true best time for the fight to happen out of all the possible times it could have happened. Again, pandemic, that wouldn't have been a good time for the fight. Then when the fight was only worth two belts, now it's worth four. And Errol Spence just beat a guy who just beat a guy who just retired Pacquiao, right? In Ugas. So Errol Spence continued to up his profile in the meantime and continue to sell out units and do good numbers and things like that. And the reason I'm not saying that for Crawford is because according to his last promoter who held his career for the last decade, 11 years or so, he says that Crawford wasn't profitable. So Crawford's a beast of a fighter, but these are errors that you really had one person doing the work. You had one person who was whose brand was built in a way that would magnify Crawford Spence you know Crawford I guess you could say the thing that he's done that is magnified and made this fight good is he kept winning that's the probably the best thing he did is he keeps whooping people and he got all knockouts so in that front he he's done his job but again it's against who and you know what guys and things like that so we know the heavier lifting was done by Errol Spence boom checkmate Introducing Super Thanks, right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, 
but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hybrid Nation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.